Okay, so there are lots of details to remember with one of these species. So instead of getting hung up on the details, I like to focus on trends or patterns. They're easier to remember and it helps you kind of generalize what's going on here. So even within the Homo erectus species, rain size increased in later forms. So from Homo habilis to Homo erectus, we see larger brain size. And from early Homo erectus to later Homo erectus, we see larger brain size as well. So this is a trend that we can keep track of here. Cranial bone thickness, brow ridge size, and tooth size decreased over time. This is likely due to the decreased demand on the face and jaws due to the increasing importance of technology and cooking. The increased dependence on culture such as tool making and the dominance of behaviors requiring technology and acquiring and processing food increase the diversity of environments, environments occupied by Homo erectus. So all of these adaptations helped Homo erectus uh, colonize across the globe. But now here we are comparing to modern humans. So now we're comparing forward, not backward. And we're seeing some differences in what made Homo erectus uh, who they were and what made anatomically modern humans more modern. And you can see the vast differences here, especially when you look at the cranium, the rounded cranium, the forehead on the modern human, and the face, the facial features of the modern human, reduced or no brow ridge, tall cranial vault, the forehead. Imagine putting your hand on the Homo erectus skull to see if they have a fever or not, and then feel the fever on your own head you can tell that we have this larger, taller cranial vault and that Homo erectus did not have that. A lot of this is just due to brain size increase. And you can see that when you look at the profiles uh, of these two skulls in comparison. All right, so although average brain, brain size increases gradually through time in Homo erectus, individuals with small brains are present even later in time. So we're still seeing smaller brain size. And I wonder what this is due to. I wonder if it's due to overall smaller body size or just individual variation. However, you can see on average, brain size did increase. This is just an interesting note here. Body weight estimates increased uh, show that Homo erectus had a larger body than earlier hominins did. So we're seeing early F, uh, early earlier hominins um, of the Australopithecus genus. Then once we get to Homo habilis, those lines turn blue. And we see a little bit of an increase with Homo habilis, but Homo erectus and Homo sapiens even further. Even more body weight increases. Okay, the Pleistocene began around two and a half million years ago, although this has changed. It used to be uh, 1.8 million years ago, and we call this the Ice Age. Uh, Homo habilis lived in the lower Pleistocene, Homo erectus lived in the middle Pleistocene. And we're seeing, we can look up here, on the very top you see the orange words, Paleocene, Eocene, Oligocene, Miocene, Pliocene, and Pleistocene at the very end there. There were different Ice Ages, um, different uh, glaciations, but when you hear the term Pleistocene, you can kind of equate that in your mind as Ice Age. All right, so let's review a little bit. Homo erectus used Ashley and stone tools. This stone tool complex included hand axes and other types of stone tools, more refined than the earlier old Awan tools. The hand axe was the most dominant tool in the Ashley and complex, characterized by a sharp edge for both cutting and scraping. Ashleyan tools are found in association with large animals, suggesting that these tools were used to kill large animals and butcher them. For example, in Ethiopia, hippopotamus, in Kenya with the hippo, baboon, and elephant. So hunting these large game was well in place by the middle Pleistocene. Don't forget, when we were talking about Homo habilis, we were talking about small animals and scavenging. So we really see hunting emerge with Homo erectus. All right. Let's remember that the brain is energetically expensive tissue. One hypothesis states that it would have been taking lots of energy to develop a large brain. Cooking food may have had something to do with this. Sediments from Wonderwork Cave in South Africa indicate that Homo erectus made and used fire by one million years ago. 
both tool use and fire is thought to have led to decreased tooth and jaw size. Another thing to remember is that cooking food um, breaks it down to where you can get more energy from that food, more calories, more nutrients, and make it easier to digest. So this could have opened up new kind of evolutionary pathways or nutritional sources through cooking. Okay, to conclude, new cultural and biological adaptations led to mobility and expansion of Homo erectus.